I welcome you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Today's message is from the book of Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. And the title is Satanic Destruction. Satanic Destruction. Shall we bow our head for praise? May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and your household. Amen. And may his glorious, countless blessing abide with every brother, sister that is sitting here in this presence. Amen. May you not lack anything that you desire. Amen. And may the Lord Almighty God meet you at the point of your needs. I pray that he will give you the understanding to his word. Amen. And the eye of your understanding also will be enlightened Amen. with the power of God. That at the end of the message, he will say, God, thank you that I was here. Amen. We bless you, Father. Amen. Come and lead us. Amen. I submit my spirit to you. I humble myself to you. Amen. Speak, Lord. For your servant is ready Amen. to do your will. Amen. Let your name be praised. Amen. To understand it to your people. Amen. We come against every unknown spirit in our midst. Amen. We command them to disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Bless you, we give glory to Jesus. Amen. I will do preaching in combination with teaching. So sometimes I will take my time so that people who want to write. I don't become too fast for them so that you can write down the points that the Lord will have for us. So I'll be doing preaching at the same time and teaching. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May you be blessed. Amen. May God strengthen you. Amen. May God empower you. Amen. Let's look into the Word of God from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. Now, the servant was more crafty. Than any of the wild animals the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Amen. Amen. Two, the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Amen? For you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good, knowing good and evil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they swayed thick leaves together, and they covered for themselves. Somebody said, Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, satanic destruction. This message, I want you to open your heart so that the Lord will give you exactly what He wants you to know today. Praise the Lord. I use the word, the message, satanic destruction. Why? Because this life that me and you have, on the very day that God gave birth to us, is a life of a journey. A journey that has a pitfalls 
That means distractions, satanic attack, and demonic attack. It's a journey that me and you, we have no option than to carry and follow this journey. I repeat, it's a journey that the day that me and you were giving birth, we have to take this journey. We have no any option now to take this journey. A journey of life. A journey to fulfill the purpose of God. Amen. Amen. We have no any other option. But this journey that is before us, there are distractions along the way of this journey. And me and you can testify as we are sitting here if we say, let's give opportunity to speak about all the distractions you have faced to your life, you can see a lot of it. But it's a journey that we all have to take. It's a journey that we all have to take. We have no option about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this journey that we have to take, God gave us also navigator. A navigator like a doctor, a map. And that map has to help us Help us to get to where our destination. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this navigator, when you follow it well, it says left and you pass left. It says right and you pass right. It says stop and you stop. It will get you to your destination. Mm -hmm. But when you ignore the navigator, and it says left, you pass right. It says right, you pass left. Mm -hmm. You will not get to your destination True. because you are not following what? The instructions of the navigator. Now, spiritually speaking, the navigator is the spiritual man of God that God put in our life. Spiritually speaking, the navigator is the true spiritual man of God that God put in our life to what? To be guidance, to give us more spiritual directions how to what? complete the journey of life. For example, in the Bible, Elijah, when he could, could not continue the journey, who completed it? Elijah. Elijah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mordecai in the Bible was the one who helped Esther to complete the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. Moses in the Bible, when he became old, what did he say? I can no longer continue the journey to the promised land. Yeah. But what will I do? I will have to appoint somebody. Who is vibrant, young, intelligent, smart, and obedient to what? To God. To continue the journey to the promised land. And he chose who? Joshua. Praise the Lord. So, the map that God has given to us, when we follow the map, it will help you complete the journey. The journey of life. The journey of the purpose of God. But there are distractions along your way. And this distraction, they are satanic distraction, demonic distraction. And there are distraction of pitfalls, disappointment. There are distraction of what? Confusion. And there are distraction of what? Moving your mind from the real thing that you need to focus on. It will distract you here, distract you there, distract you over there, while destroying you down there. And where you need to pay attention on, your mind is not on it because your mind has focused on the distraction. Praise the Lord. So for this journey to be completed, brothers and sisters, we need what? A true spiritual father in our life that will guide you with spiritual guidance and directions to help us complete the journey. His purpose is not to be a father in your life alone, not to be a mentor in your life alone, his purpose is to be there with you spiritually and physically. It's his own is to help you complete the journey of life. Praise the Lord. Because as I said in the beginning, the journey of life, there are distractions along your way. In the sense that a man can come to distract you from the true person that you're supposed to meet. It's a distraction. A man can come and distract you from your God giving wife you're supposed to marry. It's a distraction. Because he wants you. Not, he don't want you to complete the journey of what? Of life. That is the distraction. And no distraction is created by who? By Satan. Praise the Lord. You know one thing about Satan? Satan does not care if me and you go to church. You don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. 
Satan does not care if we are sin, they don't have a problem. Satan does not care if we are religious, they don't have a problem. The only thing that Satan worries much is that when we have relationship with God, because if you have relationship with God, which is you have the fear of God. And if you have the fear of God, which is you have God's word, conscious, you will not speak anyhow. You are always restrained before you talk. You think always before you utter every word from what from your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So be changing of life. Somebody is standing on your way. And the person standing on your way is Satan. And that's who wants you to complete the journey. Because you know when you complete the journey, it is too late for him to destroy you. So what he did? It came as a distraction. Satanic distraction to distract you from what you are supposed to focus on. When there is a distraction in your life, you don't focus on your prayer. The distraction takes your time of prayer. When there is a distraction in your family, your mind don't go on what you're supposed to do that is important. Because your mind is set on the distraction. And that distraction takes away our time. It is Satan's way, method, to stop me and you not to complete the journey of life and the purpose of God for our life. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. And that is what Satan did with Eve. I read the lesson from verse 1, and I read it again. It said, Now, the serpent was more crafty. Crafty. The meaning of crafty, which is sneaky. Yeah. I, I, I sneak into your house, yeah. and you get this. Ah, oh, God, what are you doing here? This is my house. That day, I know your reaction to me will be strange. Yeah. Because you don't expect me to get into your house yeah. without permission from you. Crafty, somebody who is very cunning, somebody who is screwed, somebody who is clever. And the Bible says in chapter 1 of Genesis that everything God created was what? Was good. Everything that God created was what? Who created the serpent? Thank you. So it was good. Because God created the serpent. It was good. In the beginning, because the serpent was among the creatures that God created. And you know, as a matter of fact, who named all the animals in the Garden of Eden? It wasn't God. It's not what any man of God told you, God is alive. It was Adam that named all the animals in the Garden of Eden. God gave him power and dominion, and he named all of them one by one. Because then, Adam and Eve could communicate with the animals. And the animals can hear the voice of humans. And humans can hear the voice of what? Of those creatures that God has created. Praise the Lord. And God said, everything that God created is good. In Genesis chapter 1, it reads, when he said, God created the heaven and the earth. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said, Satan, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God has made, which is all the animals that God created, Satan was the only one that was very cunning and smart and clever. Yeah. And now, I am saying satanic destruction. This man called Satan wants to perform craftiness. And because he wants to perform craftiness, he needs Another person who is also more crafty, more what crafty, like him. So what did he do? He then decided to choose the serpent because the serpent think like him. Now listen, before the serpent became bad and was cursed, he was not dead. Satan wants to perform craftiness. Satan wants to stop the journey that God has put me in you. The journey of life. The journey of the purpose of God. And that journey started with what? Adam and Eve. If you stop it with Adam and Eve, the bones and the ordinance of the human purpose on earth have been destroyed. So Satan thought it wise. Let me stop it with Adam and Eve then I will make it hard for them to achieve their goal by struggling, sweating, women going through pain and childbearing before they will succeed and achieve.
ship you are in. All was planned. Strategic plan. Let me give you one example. Anyone who is very successful, like football club, volleyball club, baseball team, before they go and meet their enemy, they sit down and watch video how their enemies play. They watch it weeks, days, and months. You know why they are watching? They want to know where their strength is. They want to know where their weak point is. They want to know who is their best player. They want to know where they are more weak and where they are more strengthened. So their opponents will watch how their enemies perform. They watch it days, weeks. And when they know it, when they meet them on the field, the way you play with them, it's like they don't know what is happening. They are prepared very well. At the end of the day, everyone expects them to be there. They ended up winning the one that they prepared for. Brothers and sisters, spiritually speaking, Satan has assigned satanic agents who gather information about me, about you, about you, about your children. You know why? Satan don't attack you just for attacking sake. Before you attack, you have to know which type of demon can control Sylvia. And which type of demon can control mercy. And which type of demon can make Pastor Collins be frustrated and continue to be frustrated. So what Satan does, he will assign on contract. Listen very careful. He will assign you on contract to a satanic agent and demonic agent and their enemies monitor you Yes, I'll give you information about the life of you. I want to know what comfort is more powerful in. Where is your weak point? What do you really like? What do you do most? How many times you pray? And how many times you fast? I want to know whether you even pray before you go to bed. When you gather all those information, they send the information to who? To Satan. The Satan then will decide. It is come. Which type of demon is strong enough to go after you? So when you know that the information they collect is not too effective, they don't just send it here. They just leave you for a while because they know anytime they want to strike, they can strike you. Mm -hmm. But when the information they get, they know that this person they said is not an ordinary person. She, she prays a lot. She fasts a lot. She sees the face of God. She prays always before she sleeps. And she's always building a relationship with God. Then, you are giving information to Satan's agent that this person, you need to prepare very well. And when you prepare very well and you meet them on the field, you can always defeat them. But when you don't prepare very well and you meet your enemy on the field, your enemy will, will defeat you. So for you to defeat your enemy, you need to prepare yourself spiritually and physically. So as I'm saying, Satan has assigned demonic and satanic agent on me, on you, and all of us. Because Satan knows that there is a journey of life to fulfill the purpose of God on this earth. And that purpose is to have peace, to have joy, that all that the Lord has in store for you, you will not struggle and suffer to have them. But Satan is a demonic agent who is there to create distraction. Is there to create confusion? Is there to stop you not to complete the journey of life to perform the purpose of God? So as you are hearing me, brothers and sisters, now I am trying to let you understand why Satan decided to choose the serpent. Satan decided to choose the serpent that God created because Satan always tell what is good. Satan tell it to be bad. Satan chose the serpent because the serpent think like Satan. The serpent is more crafty as Satan. So Satan is called that. There is no any other person who is better in the garden of Eden than to use the serpent. So the serpent was good before Satan used it. So when Satan came, Satan possessed the serpent with his spirit. So now if Satan wants to use me, it depends on how I think, how I reason, how demonic I am. There are some people that are demonic in spirit, but outwardly they are very angelic. Yeah. And they can they appear very nice and very smooth. Mm -hmm. they, they are, their voice are always arranged and they are careful what they say. But within their heart, they are demonic. And when you are not careful, their demonic spirit can bring you down. Yeah, yeah. And it will stop you to fulfill the purpose of God. Because they know who, when it comes into your life, will change your life around. Yeah. They know who, when you meet, your life will move from down on. So then, what he does is that he will always distract you not to find them. He will always distract you not to meet them. He will always distract you that wherever they are, you will never go there. 
they are already there. They are there and their purpose and their aim is to make sure that you create distraction, confusion, and stop her. Stop it not to fulfill the taking of life that God has called her for. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let me count down slow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Satan choose the serpent. Because the serpent has something with him in common. Yeah. Mm. You understand? So people are not possessed with demon because they were possessed by mistake. They were possessed with demon because their character had similarity, characteristics of Satan. That is the reason why such a thing happened. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Satan is crafty because he played with words. What did I say? Satan played with words. Satan said to the woman, did God really say that you must not eat? You must not eat anything from the garden of Eden. Let's see carefully. Satan said, so God said, you must not eat anything from the garden of Eden through the serpent. So the serpent is communicating with who? With Eve. So Eve said, no, God did not say that. But actually, this is what God said. God said, that is what listen crafty. God said, we may eat anything in the garden of Eden. But the tree in the middle of the garden of Eden, we must not eat it and must not touch it. Can I tell you the prophetic reason why God said that? Amen. 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 I want you to hear it. And I want you to take it from the rest of your life. I'm giving you the prophetic reason why God decided to give them dominion and authority and he forbid them to come to eat the garden, the, the tree, the fruit, the apple in the middle of the garden of Eden. Not because the apple was special, no. Not because there was a unique something about the apple. You know the reason? The reason is God wants to know whether the mankind that he created will obey them, will obey him. So out of obedience, why God used that apple to restrict then, it was just to test and see whether the mankind that he has created, because he's going to be the father of what? All nations. Whether this man that I've created to be the father of all nations, whether he will obey me. So God, there's nothing special in that apple in the middle of the garden of Eden. But God give them all the authority. He gave them power. That is Adam and Eve. He gave them so many privileges. And he restricted them with only the apple in the middle of the garden of Eden. Bless you, sisters. Let me see something honestly. Let me come back to our own life and living in it. Any life without restriction, that life becomes wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you raise a child without restriction, the child grows up to become very wild. Oh, wow. Because there is no restriction, some of them ended up become hardcore criminals. Some of them become assassins. Some of them ended up what? In prison. A life without restriction means that you can do anything that you want. And no one can stop you. It is my life. So because it is your life, somebody even tell you, Committing suicide is wrong. We said because I want to try how suicide it is. <laughs> and through that, it's my life without restriction, many people have lost their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said drive 50 kilometers. Life without restriction, it drive 100. Mm -hmm. And that ended up in dying. So God brought restriction from the beginning of mankind just to see whether. Mankind will obey him. Anytime there is restriction, it's all about obedience. It's not about, I am trying to be God with you. So Satan was smart 
and crafty, and he dominated and possessed the serpent. And the serpent now spoke with him, and he now said, God did not say we should not eat anything. And God just gave a specific instruction that the one in the middle of the garden we should just leave it. God wants to see whether they will obey him. But Satan played with words. And he said, did God really say that? What does it mean? Which is maybe God is confused. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you are not sure. Are you sure what that's what God said? Are, are you really sure? Maybe God said that if they eat it, but maybe you are the one who did not hear God well. Crafty is playing with words. And that is what he do to all of us. <laughs> it will be frank with ourselves. It will to all of us. So the lady then explained, that is the woman, he explained. This is what was said. And after she explained everything, that God said we can eat anything that we want to eat. He has given us everything. But Satan does not want them to have the mind of the purpose of God. And in the life and the journey that God has put in them, the glory that is behind it, the power that is behind it, and the dominion. So it is distracted in by turning the words of God upside down. So if man was shifted by the purpose of God, like being a queen, and a, a woman from a strange woman you meet on the street, came to speak about your own husband and your king, and the kingship, trying to distract you for the glory that you are into. At the end of the day, out of that distraction, you entered and committed adultery, and that adultery, you find out at the end of the day, you lost your, 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 your kinship lifestyle. You lost your husband and you became what? Nobody on the street. Do you know what Satan always do to us? Satan always don't want me and you to find anything that is bad that we do. You don't want us to know that there is a consequence to it. So that is why he creates distraction. The consequences of when you commit adultery, that when it's been found, it is a shame. You don't want you to have the consequences. You say, oh, don't worry yourself. Ah, who will even see? No one will see you now. No one will see you. Just don't worry yourself. The first person you want to see. Ah, don't worry. Who told me that when you borrow money, you can be in debt? Don't worry. You can. And many people borrow money. Don't worry yourself. You can borrow money and you pay it. Then he will not let you have the mind of there is a consequences of what you do. And one who told you that when you commit adultery, you can get disease. And man, you don't get any disease. Don't worry yourself. It is God that makes things so difficult. God, this God is even too difficult. I don't know why it is as it is. He don't want you to have the mind that anything that is bad has a consequence to it. So even Adam did not remember that what Satan is pushing them to do, there will be a consequence. If they knew about that, I don't think they would have do what they did. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, as a matter of fact, what then did the serpent did? The serpent then told Eve, God is actually the one who is confused. Because in the verse 4, can we look at it, please? Verse 4 said, The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruits from the tree in the garden. But God did say, You must not eat the fruit from the tree. That is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Verse 4, I read the two and three, and the four, now listen. You will not certainly what? Die, the serpent said. The serpent said to the woman, For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes what? will be opened, and you will know. Between good and what? And bad. Praise the Lord. What is the serpent doing that moment? The serpent is trying to create what is called doubt about the truth that you know. So he's telling what is good to be what? To be bad. So he said, You will not say that which is God is lying. In other words, which is God is selfish. God is selfish in respecting me and you from the things that we wish to do. God is too difficult. But He will not let you remember the good things that the Lord has done for you. And the benefit that you have. As a matter of fact, they are supposed to rule over you. Yes, so. 
But I do not want them to know that they have power over him. So when he came to give them the mind, are you hearing me? The mind that God is actually selfish. If he say you die, you will not die. You will not die. So if I tell you that you are not going to die, and your husband said, if you do this, you die. And now, what I see, like, I see no great confusion between you and your husband. Praise the Lord. But now the question is, even before if you have to listen to what? To say that. If you have to, first of all, check who Satan is all about. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 4, it said, let all men be what? Lie. And let God be what? Be true. So that, as it is written, that when you speak, it will be proven what? Right. And when you judge, it will be what? It will what? And when you, when you judge, it was what? Prevail. Prevail when you judge. Praise the Lord. Which is everything that other people say is a lie. And when you go to the book of John chapter 8, verse 44 that I gave you, the Bible says that Satan is a father of God, all lies. And anytime Satan wants to lie, he changed the language to his native language. So that you don't hear what comfort is saying. God will not hear what you need to say. You need to not hear what uh, uh, Messi is saying because he wants to create confusion. Take this around. So before somebody who wants to advise a married woman, is it good to take advice from a woman who has married five times and divorced five times? And now, someone who has just married, who is in marriage and working hard to put things in order, and now, the one who has divorced for six times come to say, let me advise the one who is just, just married. Is it wise? No. Is it wise to take an advice from somebody who does not know how to keep the man? Then the one who has been able to, God has been to keep one man and is trying to work out the relationship to be strong. It doesn't look well. That is what means that Satan is a father of all lies. So if children have to listen to what? To Satan. If he did little bit assessment and check his background. That is all. That is all. There are some people, when you want to advise you, first of all, look at them very well. Why now this person is about to advise you? What has his own life? What has his own life? And his own advice down to himself. For you to take advice for such person. That was the beginning of life. There was one, Toto, Navigator. And Navigator will lead this one to complete the journey. But Satan is causing destruction so that the journey should not be completed. And I said, spiritually speaking, the Navigator is a spiritual man of God. The true spiritual man of God that God put into our life will help us more spiritual work. directions. Spiritual direction in what we express in our dreams. What we express that we don't know what to do about, we don't know where to pass. And when the direction comes and we follow it, it is to help you to fight together to overcome the distraction on your way. It will help you to fight together to overcome the attack on your way. It will help you to fight together to overcome satanic and demonic distractions. So that together we say we are strong. Iron sharpened what? Iron. To overcome the devil, you need to prepare yourself spiritually, physically, very, very well. That is how you can overcome Satan and his demonic distraction. Somebody say amen. So, he did everything that he can to distract Eve yeah. by turning the west of God around oh, yeah. and said that you will not die. <laughs> For God is the one who is selfish. <laughs> There's no, there will not be any consequences <laughs> if you eat the fruit. <laughs> he said, no, nothing will happen to you. Yeah. Actually, God is a selfish one. God don't want to, you to be like him. Yeah. In other words, God wants to be a master over us yeah. and he don't want us to be equal to him. That is the mind. And, 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 and God wants you to be a slave. Mm. But I want to help you to become like God. Right. Mm. I want to help you to know what to do and what not to do. Well, God is trying, making things difficult for you. So God is not really good. The person that created the both of them, now they are turning against each other, trying to make the good things to look what bad. So now, the serpent is communicating with what to eat. And the distraction that the serpent created about God to eat, it worked. And when it worked, Eve now, her mind now shifted from the instructions of the Lord. I repeat, the mind of Eve shifted after the distraction of Satan. It shifted about everything that God said that she should not do. She shifted. 
And now, she begins to take trust in Satan. So I told you to the Bible, can we look at it again? In the slide, six. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and what pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Praise the Lord. Which is Adam was there. Yeah. Adam has no more vision. <laughs> Adam was there. <laughs> Adam was what? On the walking trip. Adam was there. So, brothers and sisters, if you are hearing me today, I say this message is to help you to prepare yourself against your enemies. Amen. Just like a football match. If you want to win your opponent and your enemy, you. steady them. Yeah. Steady your enemy. Steady them very well. And when you steady them very well, when you meet them on the field, you defeat them. Yeah. You defeat them very well. And they will know that you came and came well prepared. Spiritually speaking, if you want to overcome Satan, prepare very well. Don't dismiss Satan. For Satan, God gave me power. And all the powers, sometimes I ask God, why did you even let it for him? God did not restrain Satan with any of the powers. He left him just to give him a chance to test all of us if we will obey God. And those of us that prove Satan wrong, at the end of the day, he will leave you alone. And the Bible says he waits until the appropriate word, time to return back. If you are hearing me, brothers and sisters, most of the challenges that we face in life, most of the difficulties that sometimes confront us, is because Satan wants to stop you not to complete the journey of life and the purpose of God. But if you prepare yourself very well, you can overcome him. Amen. Amen. If you equip yourself very well and you follow the direction, the map that God gave you, you will surely overcome Satan. Amen. You will be victorious, and Satan will know that you are indeed a beloved child of God, as God said. You are the apple of my eyes. God is proud of what he has created. And what he has created, he has decreed and declared, he will not destroy it as he did in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. So he has given us a chance and our own free will to choose for him. And when you choose for him, he will choose for you. And he will fight for you. Like no evil are before you and your family. Yeah. Satan only dominates and possess people who think and reason like him. And he uses to destroy others. And at the end of the day, he destroys on God. I pray in the name of Jesus that it will not be a portion. Amen. It will not be a portion of the unborn children Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you find peace Amen. in the land that you live. Amen. And may God always remember you whenever you call upon his name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he turned the words of God to be what? Useless in the eyes of Eve. Like a man who is very deceitful and cunning. Hmm. They will speak down on the one you are with. And maybe the one you are with has his not nobody. I can take care of you better than them. That one, I'm not that one in the heart. I can take care of you better than them. You just be with me. That is how the people who sound like evil, that's how they are. They are crafty. They are cunning. They will, they will, if they are not careful, they will make you be the good one. And go after them. And later, when everything that you have is gone, they will tell you, you don't have money again. I can't leave you. <laughs> so, then you know that it just was satanic what? Distraction. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, all of us will face it. Yeah. All of us will go through. No one is exempted. No we all face this. Yeah, Some of the places that we're supposed to be, and most of the people we're supposed to be, and the blessings that God has, Satan knows that if that day happens, our life will turn around. Yeah. Things will change. But it's always been a hindrance. It's always been a distraction. It's always been a stand God. There was a, it's a contract he has signed with those agents to make sure that they don't get to complete the journey of life. God have mercy. Amen. May God have mercy. Amen. So he did the same thing with Eve. And when Eve was distracted, her mind now changed from the purpose of God. Her mind changed. And now she no longer think of what God said. So now, according to the Bible, her eyes saw that the fruit was very pleasing. 
Is it everything that sometimes we could sometimes be very careful? No, be very careful. If you are not careful, you end up yeah. really miserable. Yeah. Everything that looks desirable and admirable, they say be careful. Yeah. Think twice about it. Mm -hmm. Refrain yourself. So not everything that looks too good is always true. Yeah. Be very careful. And that is what happened in the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching this message because I want the Spirit of God wants us to know sometimes the reason why some of us we struggle to achieve our purpose. Yeah. There is a, a contract on you, mm -hmm. created by Satan and his agents. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to complete the journey of life. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? We say, don't follow the map. So don't you don't follow the map when you are traveling. And you put a contract, you want to go to a, a, a mass train. Mm -hmm. In the place you are going, you put an address. Mm -hmm. If you follow the contract, you take it to your destination. Yeah, but when you don't follow the contract, you will not get there. No. So what do you do? You will distract you. You will make your passport look like the devil. And the reason why your prayer is not being answered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people they come up, they don't even want to see their pastor again. They don't want to even think they are going again. You don't even know why. Why you are not running away from the thing that is happening? you? I'm telling you, if you think very well, you know that satanic distraction is at work. There's a contract on you just to take you away from the yeah. thing that will help you. To take you away from the thing that will deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the Lord sent me here today yeah. to give a spiritual eye opening and awakening in our spirit. You know, most of the things that happen around us, mm. it is not ordinary. They are not physical, but they are spiritual, satanic, and demonic agents. They have signed contract on all of us. Even me, as a stand here preaching and talking yeah. about the law, yeah. they have signed contract in, on me, and the contract is monitoring and monitoring and monitoring. Bring us all the information so we can know the type of devil we can use against him. Yeah. They will continue to continue, but at the end of the day, they say everything that has been us was as an, as an end. In the name of Jesus, yeah. it has an end. And when the time comes for Satan to be destroyed, and Satan to be destroyed, God will show the table there. Yeah, yeah. But before then, he said, don't, don't ignore the map. So yeah, don't ignore the map. Say, Pastor Paul, is, don't ignore the map. Follow the map, I gave you. And when you follow the map, Pastor Paul, is future complete again. Mm -hmm, yeah. But when you don't follow the map, and you allow Satan destruction mm -hmm. around you in the church, who is coming? Who is not coming? How many there are? How many are not? So if you put your mind on it, I will distract you and you will be frustrated and you will not do the will of God. <laughs> so it's not only you, all of us, we are into it. <laughs> so God said, follow the map, which is follow my will and follow my purpose. And follow the direction I gave you. And when you follow the map, I will lead you to complete the journey. But when I don't follow the map and the control, I will end up with the point of my sleep. I will end up in Amsterdam. And I'll get them frustrated. He said, Ah, this one said, What happened? And they said, Did you follow it? <laughs> so, spiritually speaking, when you are connected to the spiritual world of God and you believe that God has called you, God is with you. Mm -hmm. God is working to you to help you or to save you. It is meant for us to do what is called Iron Shabbat Iron. To have a relationship with them spiritually, physically, so that through them, the guidance and the direction is just to help us to complete the journey. God does not want to be a God in your life, He yeah. just wants to be your friend. He said that He do not call you slave, for a slave does not sit with his master on the table. But I call you friend because I love you and you are one of me. So I don't treat you different. He don't want to be a God in our life. He just wants to be our friend. Amen. That you love him. And you accept him in your heart. With your soul. So that he can be your father. The father that you never had on this earth. The love that God gave me, I did not get it from my heavenly father. Because my earthly father, thank you, my earthly father. Because when I'm sick, the only thing you pray that God help me. But if God did not help me, and I die, what can my earthly father do? Nothing he can do. So I need now the heavenly father. To help me to overcome my sickness. And he said, if I follow the map, I will surely get to my destination. Amen. But along the journey you are going, he said, I should remind you, there are satanic agents, there are demonic agents, and their aim is that stop this woman not to complete the journey of life and to perform the purpose of God. So if you know this, which is, it's a woman of God, pack this information to them, and if you know this, it means that me and you need to equip ourselves appropriately, differently, how we approach our enemies and how we deal with the enemy. 
It will enable me and you to stand well and to stand firm and stand strong. Not the one leg that is shaking, but both two legs, so that you can be able to overcome Satan and his evil distractions. Amen. Amen. Because, brothers and sisters, when he succeeded with Eve, he succeeded not with force, he succeeded with distraction yes. and with waste and turning things around. At the end of the day, when Eve ate the fruit that was forbidden not to eat, the Bible says he gave some also to whom? To the husband. And the husband also ate it. The husband was also distracted because the wife, the, 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 the Adam was also distracted because Eve has also been distracted. And because Eve has also been distracted, he, she was able also to distract him. Adam. But the spiritual ordinance, men are not supposed to take from women. But men are supposed to be a provider. Mm -hmm. And women are supposed to receive mm -hmm. that the spiritual ordinance of God, biblically. But now, what is happening? When the woman now wants to resume the position of man, you are now giving the chance that the man is nothing. Because you can take care of yourself, I don't need you. So even when the man can even provide, some of them become to the position where they feel like, I, I, can't, I won't do it because she can provide. Until she asks, and if you don't ask, I don't give because she can provide for herself. But it has destroyed the bond and the spiritual ordinance of God and the covenant. Men are supposed to pour onto the woman. And the women are supposed to receive. And when you are receiving, you also reciprocate it back with love and compassion and unity. And together, you excel and grow from stronger. But when you become all the way around, you cannot longer now come and expect the woman to now respect the man as the man is supposed to be respected. Because you are giving the woman the power that God gave you to be the one to pour. And now she is the one pouring and you are receiving. The world has been destroyed. Yeah. And that is the purpose why the world has become as it is. At the end of the day, the women turn out to become lesbians with themselves. Mm -hmm. And the men turn out to become gays with themselves. Because everyone is claiming authority. No one wants to be submissive. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to go to God, submit themselves to the other one. Because they think that if I can provide for you, that I am God over yourself. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. So it has caused many damage to the society and the community now that we are living in. Mm -hmm. I know that what man can do, what can do, but as a matter of fact, men and women are not the same. I respect that. What man can do, woman can do. But there are certain things that men can do alone that the woman will need the help of the man. Because they are supposed to be your helper, your helpmates. And you are supposed to be there to help them. But when the Lord has turned outside down, you have broken the covenant. So such a home, no matter what you do, sometimes people don't understand why the Western community divorce often. It's because of what I am preaching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Western community divorce often, and when you divorce the divorce, some of them ended up with men. I know one that was a colleague to me, he was with a woman married to children, but this man was six people with another man. Mm -hmm. But he was sleeping with a woman, the Dutch woman, and the Dutch woman he was sleeping with, no one knew that her husband was a gay. So the ordinance, many things are destroyed in our community. But later, I asked him why. He said because in the family will not accept when they know that he is gay. And for that reason, he had to marry the woman and be with the woman just to come around. So the woman is in the marriage, but this woman, she's not happy. Because what she's supposed to be enjoying, she's not enjoying. Now, he's going out there to bring problems, and the problem affects the woman that is, she's living with. So you see, the covenant has been broken and it has created chaos, uncertainty into 
see the light that we are living. And it's all started because when the man began to receive from a woman that destroyed the world, many generations, young lazy men these days in Africa, I want to mention the countries. These days, they only looking for rich women to attach themselves with than to use them and to drive cars. At the end of the day, such a man, your future is not bright, but you look like it's bright. That's what we said. It look admirable. It look pleasing. But the end, it's not the consequences of what happened to Eve and Adam. It was worse. What they were supposed to rule over now came to rule over them. Is it not a shame? So if you are hearing me, brothers and sisters, I'm here for good, not for evil. I'm here to speak what is right and know what is wrong. So when I go, my conscience will not change me. But I'll be free and look at your face and say, we can say smile because we all speak the truth ourselves. Lazy young men these days. Lazy young men. They don't want to walk. They don't want to take care of women. But they want women to take care of them. At the end of the day, the woman that is taking care of them, they still have secret girl friends. So you see, all these things, you are destroying your inner spirit. Your, your, your liver and your kidney is being destroyed because blood is being taken to the person that was not supposed to take that blood. And the woman is still with you. They do things to get you come back and come back and come back. Your future is not bright because the beginning Something has been destroyed. Men are supposed to pour into women. And women are supposed to receive. And the women, when they receive with love and kindness, they reciprocate it also with love and kindness. Because women are not difficult to deal with. I always say it. They become very difficult and complicated when they don't get what they offer. But women are not difficult. Women are very lovely and kind. And when you understand them very well, they will always give their life to you. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. He is a fine and good woman will find what? Yeah. Favor in the eyes of God. Yeah. Because women have a spiritual ordinance of God's blessing upon them. Yeah. And when you treat them well, your hope, there will be peace all the time. Yeah. They are not complicated. They become complicated when they feel like they are being cheated inside and they are out. And you're always crying. Why you look at it like nothing is wrong? Yeah. What are you making problem about? All this. Mm -hmm. It is pain. They are pain inside. Women are not difficult. No. Just take care of them. And that is what God told Adam to do. God told Adam to take care of Eve. Mm -hmm. But later, who is giving the apple to? <laughs> who was giving the apple to? Eve was giving the apple to Adam. And who was supposed to take care of who? Adam was supposed to take care of Eve. You see what I said? That's where the whole thing started for. Eve now offered it to what to Adam. And Adam also ate it. They are all distracted. Because Satan told them that there will not be consequences. After the fall, that is when God began to give them the consequences. Where was it that he has gone? He left the serpent. After he used the serpent to cause that chaos, he left the serpent. Mm -hmm. Because before the serpent could walk, he has legs like me. Mm -hmm. But when the curse came, God said, Curse be upon you, that you shall crawl with your belly on the dust, and dust shall you eat. Mm -hmm. And he said, Curse be upon women, for in childbearing you shall go through severe pain. Mm -hmm. And he said, Men, we shall struggle and struggle and struggle before we can have things meet. But you know who broke that case for us? This case. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, bless you. God bless you. Jesus broke that case for us. By sacrificing his life for me and you, he took away that problem. So now, you can no longer complain that Adam is the cause of your downfall. You can no longer complain that if he did not eat that apple at all, who would have suffered? Who would have suffered? Everything would have been good. That case had been broken. Amen. Through the blood of what? Jesus. Amen. The curse has been destroyed through the blood of Jesus. I'm running up. We are facing it because of disobedience. 
Because of disobedience. When you obey God, God will always obey you. When you honor God, God will always honor you. When you acknowledge God, God will always acknowledge you. When you exalt God, God will always exalt you above your enemies. When you humble yourself before God, He said He will exalt you and lift you up. And we are still struggling because of what? Disobedience. So their discretion they came to them, they want to know whether they obey. And they did not, they were not able to obey God. And when they fall, Satan disappeared. And that was the chain of life for me and you. And the journey of life for me and you, brothers and sisters, is for us not to ignore the map. What would your spiritual father if you have one that you trust in him? Don't keep matters to yourself. God said we should be restrained with our ways, with people who you know they cannot help you. But open up spiritually to your spiritual father. They are your spiritual man. They are your navigator. They are the ones who will give you the direction, the guidance. Together with them. How long did you take? I can't tell you. But I know. But God did not write anywhere in the Bible that weeping will last the whole night. No. Did he say that? No, no. And he not said weeping will last the whole night. But I know he said in the Bible that weeping only lasts for what? A night. But joy, thank you, joy cometh in the morning. I know this. And I want you to have this in your heart. That weeping will not last Amen. the whole night. Joy will come. Amen. Follow the map. So that God will lead you to what? To your destination. Just as the Tonton lead you to your destination, so God will lead you to your destination. Even when Elijah was running away, God was able to let him complete the journey. God was able to help Samuel to help his soul. But when his soul deviated, that he went and recalled his spirits because he wanted to speak with Samuel, let me know he was dead, that God said we should not leave. At the end of the day, God allowed him to complete until he died on the field because of his own work, disobedience. Let's say, if you have had this message, and you have had what I have preached today, concerning satanic destruction, I want you to study your enemy very well. I want you to prepare very well when you are going on the journey. Because the journey, there is a pitfall. There is a distraction. There is confusion that will come. But when you follow the map, it will help you to give you the strategic mind how to overcome your aim to complete the journey. And spiritually speaking, is the tonton is your spiritual father. That you believe in your heart that God is with them. That believe in your spirit that God placed them in your heart or in your life for a purpose. Together, guidance, direction, God will help all of us to complete the journey. Amen. The journey is not easy. If I tell you it's easy, I'm not being honest to you. The journey is not going to be easy. But follow the map. And when you follow the map, you will overcome the distraction of the way. For God loves you and He cares for you. He says, Satan is a father of all lies. He said, There's no truth in his mouth. He belongs to his father, the devil. He was a lecturer from the beginning. Who do you know hold on to the truth of God's word? It's not the person you listen to. He wants you to fall. He wants you to be. But I pray that that will not be your portion. I pray that that will not be the portion of your family. I pray that God will reach out to you anytime you call upon his name. That you will find peace. That his face will shine upon you. I pray that the glorious glory of God, countless blessing shall be for you and your family. Amen. I pray that God will give you the wisdom to follow the path. Amen. That you may complete 
is the death of life. That the pit for you will not fall into it in Jesus' name. Amen. That the despise for you will not fall into it in Jesus' name. Amen. May your soul be blessed. Amen. May your family be blessed. Amen. May your children be protected with the blood of Jesus. Amen. May sorrow never be for you in your family. Amen. May God take away your pain Amen. and your troubles Amen. and your difficulties. Amen. May God fight for you in the night and in the day. And all those evil satanic spirits that have sent contract for you, I break that contract in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anywhere they monitor you and your children with chaos, Holy Ghost fire, destroy them. Amen. My desire, my prayer, that you will find peace in your home. Amen. That your husband will love you. Amen. You will find a true man Amen. that will treat you Amen. and take care of you the way you deserve to be taken care of. Amen. May the spiritual ordinance of God's glory and favor always in abundance accompany you. Amen. About you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May this day, as you are in his presence, may his glory never cease to life. Amen. We pray for those who are sick, for God's strength upon them. Amen. We pray for those who are sick, that God should give them divine recovery. Amen. We pray that those who are weak, may their bones, may their organs be activated Amen. with the power of the Holy Ghost. May the pregnant women all over the world be protected. Amen. That their child will not be born handicapped. Amen. That their children will not be born with deaf ears. Amen. That their children will not be born with demonic complications. Amen. We bound it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May those who are going through pain in their stomach, pain in their head, frustrated with life, I pray that God will reach out to them. Amen. I pray that God will deliver them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May He have mercy upon us. Amen. May He strengthen us. Amen. And revive us. Amen. For it is good to serve the Lord. Yes. It is good to know the Lord. Yes. May God bless you. Amen. And all those of you who are part of me, who are part of this message, may God guide you through this message. Amen. May God strengthen you through this message. Amen. To know that the journey of life, to fulfill the purpose of God, and there is distraction all over our way. And when we prepare very well, we shall overcome Satan. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen.